trying to fit in, preparing for lessons, consolidating from the previous lessons, homework, and potentially revising for a test, as well as all your other social commitments and extracurricular is hard. So keep watching and I'll talk you through exactly how you can organise your time to fit all of that in. Hi everyone, welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. I'm Miss Estrick and I'm going to talk you through how you can fit in everything you need to in each week based on what I've observed after teaching for over 10 years, seeing what the A-star students typically do and what works for them. So let's start by how much time you have to fit in everything during the school hours. Now I'm gonna go through a typical year 12 timetable that students at my school have. Obviously it'll be different for you because you won't have exactly the same timetable, the same courses, but just to get an idea. So at my school, students do either three A-levels in the EPQ or four A-levels. And on average, that works out as four contact hours per week per subject, so four lessons. Now that adds up to 16 hours of lessons out of a maximum of 25 hours. So that means on average, students have seven study periods. But actually, one of those hours goes to an assembly that they have. So they have about six hours. So what that means is every week, on average, a student would have six study periods. Now let's consider how much work you might have been given every single week. So we'll go along with the idea of you either have three A-levels plus an EPQ or four A-levels. Now let's assume that you get set an hour and a half of homework per subject per week on average, plus let's say an hour set aside for either extra consolidation or preparing in advance for the lesson. That comes to two and a half hours per subject. And if we say you've got four subjects, that is 10 hours per week of work that we need to fit in. Now, if you do use all six of those study periods for this work, that means across the working day, that's six hours out of the 10 already covered. And that leaves you just with four hours over the entire week that you have to find time for. And that might be one hour per evening for four nights. It might be two hours over two evenings. You see whatever works for your schedule. Now, realistically, you might have some weeks where you have more than that, because if you have a test, maybe you have to find an extra few hours to be revising for that, or maybe even more. And on those weeks, you will have to do more work in the evening. So it might be that on a week where you have a test, you actually have to use all of your study periods plus two hours every evening or most evenings plus a bit of the weekend. Now that is a lot. It is a big commitment of time. A-levels are a big commitment of time. But if you weren't doing A-levels, you'd need to be going into full-time work, which is even more hours. You're gonna be looking at working constantly, solidly, for about the same amount of time on a shift so it does work out the same and hopefully you've picked the A-levels because you really enjoy them and therefore you shouldn't mind doing the work too much. So basically the best way to fit it all in is to use those study periods. I know I've said you might have to do some in the evenings, well you will have to do some in the evenings and some people will have commitments, maybe you have to look after a family member, siblings, you might have a lot of extracurricular, you might have to have a part-time job to be able to fund um, your studies as well. So you need to look at what works for you. If you know evenings aren't gonna work, then you might have to pick one of the days at the weekend or at least the mornings um, at the weekend where you will do the work. So start to look at your timetable, what you have in terms of your lessons, study periods, extracurricular, other work commitments or family commitments, and you can see where that free time is. Now obviously don't use all the free time because you do need time to rest, relax and socialise as well. So give it a go, shuffle those times around, see what works for you. It is a lot, but if you want those top grades, you have to commit to it, you have to be disciplined to fit everything in. It does pay off though, trust me. All the students I've seen make the most improvement and get the top grades, they follow this strategy. I next wanted to talk to you about certain apps, and I don't know if you use any apps already to help you plan your revision. If you do, add it in the comments below. I'd love to know what you personally use and find great. There's two in particular that I've seen a lot of students use at my school, and they really recommend them. One of those is Time Tree, and the other is Adapt. 
So Time Tree is the app where you can put in what your goals are. You can then start a clock to show when you've started working, stop it when you've finished, and it times how long you've been working for. And it gives you a little graphic showing how much a tree has grown in the time that you've studied. So if you are someone that is quite motivated by being able to see a graphic and animation showing you your hard work paying off with the time ticking up, then that's quite a good one for you to see the improvements and the amount of work you're doing each week. Adapt is another one which is free and you can put in what your A-levels are and it will make you a work timetable in less than a minute. So you tell them what your timetable is, you tell them what the A-levels are and it makes it all for you, which is awesome. It will also automatically keep track of your revision. So as you are doing it, you let them know that you've started it and it keeps track to see how well you're sticking to your timetable. Now, if you want even more help with creating timetables, having an actual template for this and guidelines, then check out the one that you can download off my website and I'll link in the description below. If you are serious about getting those top grades and proving your time management, then I recommend that you watch this video next don't know which side it's going to pop up, but I'll link it up there and at the end as well. This goes through how you can manage your time using a timetable also. So that is it for today. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos.